everybody, another night, another movie, and I just got done watching 1991's Thelma and Louise, starring Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis, Harvey Keitel, and Michael Madsen. Um, this one I've only seen a couple times before, and the reason for that is, well, essentially, <laughs> this movie was ruined for me when I had to study it in A-level media, uh, so I've not seen it since then. Thankfully, uh, it's been many years since then, so enough time's passed for me to essentially forgot what I was taught. Um, but... For those who don't know, uh, this is a classic road movie. Um, it tells the story of uh, Thelma, played by uh, Gina Davis, who's this kind of underappreciated and underloved housewife, who goes uh, is uh, <laughs> goes on a holiday uh, with her best friend Louise, played by Susan Sarandon, and but she doesn't tell her husband. She just like leaves a note for him. And they go on the road, and, and she's trying to let loot, let her hair down, and stuff like that. And they go, to, uh, they stop off at this bar because uh, she's like, oh, well, we're not going to get to where we're going before dark anyway, so we might as well. It doesn't hurt to stop off. So they stop off at this bar, and um, this guy starts hitting on Thelma, and she's like, oh, this is fun, la 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 la. Except um, it goes a little too far and he takes her outside and he attempts to rape her. Uh, Louise stops it happening and when he keeps pestering, she shoots him and then they have to get on the road. Uh, so now they're on the run and shaken up and everything and uh, Louise contacts her boyfriend, uh, uh, Jimmy, played by Michael Madison, and says, you know, I've got this much money in my account, C can you, uh, you know, wire it to me and I'll pay you back. And he's like, yeah, okay. But he turns up and, and you get this impression that he doesn't really, ha they don't have the best of relationships uh, and, and stuff like that. And you're not sure how, you know, much he loves her and stuff like that. Um, but he takes the money to her directly. Uh, instead. But en route, uh, they meet up with this hitchhiker, JD, played by uh, Brad Pitt in one of his like first roles. Um, and he essentially steals the money, uh, he cons uh, Felmer and then steals the money uh, that they just got from Jimmy. So then they're broke, they're on the run, you know, they're just... So um, after hearing, because um, Thelma learned that JD was a robber and he was like, oh, this is how you do it and stuff like that. So she uses what his script was, or at least the script he told her he had, uh, and uh, robs a convenience store. Uh, to get some money. So now uh, they've got murder and armed robbery against them. So they're, they're like rush, running for Mexico kind of thing. But Louise refuses to go uh, via Texas because we then learn that actually she was raped or uh, either she was raped or attempted uh, rape in Texas. So she refuses to go there. Um, so yeah, this whole movie is basically this chase and, and stuff like that. And you've got like Harvey Keitel, Harvey Keitel and Stephen Tobolowski, um, their cops following them and stuff like that. And Harvey Keitel's character is sympathetic and that he's like, you know, there's good reason, they're not the kind to normally do this. And um, they're like interviewing uh, Filmer's awful, awful husband played by the great Christopher McDonald, who's just perfect at playing douchebags, and I, I've never met him, uh, and it could just be that he's great at playing those slimy characters, but I always feel bad, because whenever I see him in stuff, he's just complete dicks. Um, but yeah, this, this is a great, um, this is one of those movies that is supposed to like empower women, and it's written by a woman, it's by uh, Callie Curry. Um, and it's direct, but it's directed by Ridley Scott, 
and it is it's there's a great friendship partnership between uh Sarandon and Davis and I don't know if they got on in real life but you do feel this friendship on screen um my only I have several problems with this movie though um one is the fact that Thelma, you know, she has this instance where she's nearly raped. It's a traumatising event. And then immediately she's eyeing up JD, who's another guy that, you know, screws them over kind of thing. And she very quickly has sex with the, him, even though not knowing him and that. And I get that she's, um, I get that she's trying to let her hair down and break free from this controlling husband uh, but there's something really jarring about the notion that after you know somebody tried to rape her that she would be eagerly jumping into the bed with a complete stranger um that just bugged me and of course you know I have not been through that situation I don't know different people react different ways and stuff I get that but it, I just found it a little distracting um also, all the men are this complete gits. Um, I get that this is supposed to be a movie that empowers women, that gives the strong image. I mean, again, this is one of those movies, much like I said with Sarah Connor in the Terminator movies, uh, where you see these women at the start where they're, they're jumpy, they're, they're scared, they're terrified, and you see that obviously uh, Louise is haunted by her past and stuff, so then this is playing on her but she can't let it out kind of thing um but but all the men in this so you have the, the douche that tries to rape Felma. you have jd who steals their money there's this guy in a truck that is constantly being lurid work to them when they pass um there's other guys in this that are complete gits and i'm just like where do you draw, in, draw the line between feminism and, and empowerment and women and just essentially putting down men? Not all men are gits. And I feel like in order to make these women look stronger, they have to put down the male species. And I don't know, I just... I know this is something that we kind of looked at when I did my media studies and stuff, but... I don't know, I just found it a bit distracting. Um, there's, uh, um, I mean, it's just, it's difficult to, to, you know, feel any, I guess the idea is that we feel for these women. Uh, but I just, I just couldn't get behind that. Um, there's, <laughs> I felt really bad for the one black guy in this whole movie um who was stereotypically a rastafarian cyclist in the most garish colors um smoking a spliff and, and listening to johnny nash on his walkman it was the worst i there's one shot of one color guy later uh, a police officer in a car that's chasing Thelma and louise at the end but other than that, this is the only colour guy in the whole movie. And he turns up and it's just like, Ha, ah, we get it. It's a, it's a Rastafarian druggie, you know. Yay. And even worse is the fact that, you know, he, he doesn't help this police officer that's been locked in his, uh, in the trunk of his car. He just, you know, blows his, uh, uh, uh marijuana laden smoke into this air hole that um Thelma shot into the uh, hood and I'm just like this is awkward and I'm like I don't know how I should feel about this it's slightly yeah um so they're my pet peeves with this movie the other thing how the bleep do people keep that they encounter keep turning up ahead of them and on the same road. I could argue that they told you uh, uh, that Thelma told JD where they were going, um, but he somehow always teleports ahead of them. And there's this 
this truck driver that, like I say, it keeps sticking his head out and, and making rude comments and gestures and stuff. And somehow he always ends up ahead of them and they keep having, I mean, literally, like, three times in the whole movie, they have to drive past him. And I'm just like, the practical side of, I mean, I don't drive, I don't know, you know, this is a long trek for them through America. You know, I know they're stopping off and stuff, but it just seems far too coincidental that they keep bumping into these people on the exact same road. I found it really, really distracting. But otherwise, no, this is a good movie. It's, like I say, it's well acted by Sarandon and Davis, and you do feel that camaraderie. Um... The ending is so up for much debate. Uh, you could say it's empowerment, you could say it's freedom, you can, you know, like I say, this is one of those things I had to analyse to death when I did media, so it's not something that I want to look at in this, you know, review. Um, but I get that a lot of people have different interpretations of it. Um, personally, it works. Um, but I, I can't imagine any other end. It could just be that I, I've never known anything but the end for it. Uh, but I can't imagine anything else uh, for it. Um, the music is a little odd. It's this really uplifting music as they drive off this cliff. And I get that they're finding themselves and stuff like that. But I was just like, okay, they just committed suicide and there's uplifting music playing. Great. Um, but no, it's a good road movie. It's two hours long, uh, just over that. Um, and it is enjoyable. It does occasionally feel like it lags, but it's brilliantly directed by Scott. Um, there's some really good, I like country music, so a lot of the Tammy Bonnet, Loretta Lynn and stuff, uh, I really like. Um, so I enjoy the soundtrack. Uh, there's a lot of atmosphere. It, uh, the roads, uh, I don't know if this is true, but most of the car scenes when they're going along are, uh, they're not green screened. Um, and you feel it. it. You do feel like you're on the road with them. So uh, kudos to, for that, because if this had been a lot of green screen uh, scenery, it would have been really jarring in a movie that is based solely on the road. Um... It's weird to see Brad Pitt really young. Uh, it's uh, good to see him in something very different to what he then started going on into. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is a fun movie. I'd give it at least a 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, it's not perfect by any means. Um, and I think this is one of the ones that... Uh, um, it can be hit and miss for people. Uh, I enjoy it, but I have serious issues with it. And I find those issues distracting. And that's why I can't give it any higher on my ratings. Um, but if you get the chance, if you like road movies, if you like, you know, like, these strong women movies, then please do give a chance to... 1991's Thelma and Louise. Uh, that was tonight's movie. We'll be back again, as always, tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to seeing your comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, please check out my other reviews uh, and subscribe. Uh, but for now, this is Sketch, signing out.